Hello and welcome to the Sky News Daily Podcast with me, Leah Belletto. Now, a year ago this month, our security and defence editor, Deborah Haynes, well, she broke a story about the Royal Air Force unlawfully discriminating against white men. This was all in a drive to hit diversity targets. Now, initially, they denied any wrongdoing. But finally, after an inquiry, the new RAF boss has apologised. And now white men, derided as useless white male pilots who failed in their applications to join the RAF, well, they say they want their rejected applications reviewed. So many lives would have been affected by it, some even maybe ruined, because it's some something some people just dream of their whole lives. And for there to be no action, nothing really done about it, just an apology, it just feels very cheap. I'm pleased to say we're joined in the studio by our security and defence editor, Deborah Haynes. This is, Deborah, a bombshell story that you've been working on for the past year. But dial us back. How did this all start and how did we get here? Well, it's literally almost a year ago. It was on the 4th of August last year that the then head of recruitment, Group Captain Lizzie Nicholl, resigned in protest at what she deemed to be an unlawful order to pull forward female and ethnic minority recruits onto training courses ahead of white men. At the time, she was being told that this was legal by her chain of command, that this order under equality legislation falls under the bracket of positive action, which is a legal way to improve diversity in the workforce, as opposed to positive discrimination, which is unlawful. And she felt that she had been given legal advice herself that said that this action was actually contrary to the legislation. She wasn't being listened to by her chain of command. And so she took the only action that she thought she could, which was to resign. Obviously, it's a, it's a hugely important push to try to improve diversity in the workforce, especially in the military. You need diversity of thought. You obviously want to recruit from the widest possible pool of talent. So nobody can uh, criticise that that push. But the then head of the Air Force, Air Chief Marshal Sir Mike Wigston, he'd wanted basically to double the rate of women recruits coming into the service to 40%. Uh, by 2030, and for ethnic minorities to 20% by 2030, which had then trickled down to this incredible pressure on the recruitment force to hit these targets. And what you were seeing at the end of the recruitment year was this sudden rush to find any single woman or ethnic minority on your lists and fast track them forwards. And many people in the force were worried. And then it stopped when she blew the whistle. Mm. And so when you got wind of this story, initially the response was denial. Absolute denial that there was any pausing of, of recruitment, uh, denial that had, there had been any unlawful discrimination. And we had to keep pushing at it. What then became apparent as I was digging into this is that the previous recruitment year, um, so the year to March 2021, and the one before that, so the year to March 2020, I was being told what sounded like uh, unlawful activity was taking place with the fast tracking of these recruits. These are candidates wanting to become enlisted aviators, not the officer cadets. Uh, although as well, we did come across evidence that suggested a much wider push to bring women and ethnic minorities into courses, including an email that we reported on that was dated January 2021, in which a recruitment officer derided candidates as useless white male pilots. Goodness me, this is a, a real mess. So you you sniffed out the story, you knew there was something there. When did you start to talk to those recruits who were affected by this? So the story has been going on for this whole last year. An inquiry was launched into the resignation of Group Captain Lizzie Nicholl, and that reported in June. And it was stunning. It acknowledged that the RAF had committed unlawful discrimination against white men. And this was specifically about those two years to March 2021, mm. 161 cases when women and ethnic minorities had been fast-tracked onto courses and men effectively paused. And, and these, again, were for enlisted aviators, so other ranks, not the officers. Now, it's really important to stress 
that there's different recruitment paths for the other ranks and for officers such as pilots. Mm. And there's been no confirmation from the RAF that there's ever been any discrimination in the officer side of things. But obviously you have had that email about, you know, useless white male pilots. And and so people are asking, you know, have I been discriminated against? And I've spoken to two young men who they did have their applications rejected. And one of them has already, and one of them is planning to, requesting an appeal of their application on the basis of all of this mm. to ask, you know, was it just that I wasn't good enough or was there something else? How has it impacted their lives, these two men that haven't gone through that recruitment process, they didn't get the jobs? What, what did they tell you? How did it impact their lives? Hugely. You know, they really felt as though they gave it their all. At the end of the day, the trajectory of my life has changed as a result of discrimination. My career has entirely shifted. My plans for living, what part of the country I live in, not just my day to day, but all of the big pitch stuff that has just been my dream has been erased. They talked a lot of like massive delays in terms of going through this process and disinterest at the other end. And this is all during the time that we're talking about. Um, so this 2020, 2021 into 2022, actually. And it was the COVID pandemic, which they were like, well, maybe it's because of the pandemic that's have, had an effect. But they all talked about this long delays to get through, which was really demoralising. And then when they actually got to the end of, of their journeys, they didn't really get proper explanations as to why they weren't being selected, just that they were not good enough. And they just felt that the, there wasn't any proper follow up so that they could learn and maybe try again. And after the break, more on the frustration within the armed forces at the lack of accountability among the RAF's top brass compared to how the army deals with soldiers who break the rules. Deborah, we need to talk about accountability now. There must be growing anger for those people involved once they had this information about, you know, possible discrimination here. There's genuine outrage that nobody's been held to account. So the, the RAF have held their hands up and said, yes, they've acknowledged this has happened. The new head of the RAF, Air Chief Marshal Sir Richard Knighton, he's apologised for what's happened. And that yeah, there is this big, I've got it in front of me, this big inquiry, the results of pages the, and pages, the inquiry, yeah. which is more than 70 pages long, the non-statutory inquiry where it documents very, very closely what happened during that time. Um, and so yeah, the, the head of the Air Force did say that it was because of this legal advice that was wrong. And then so about positive action, but actually moving into positive discrimination. So in that period where you had this unlawful activity going on, where they were fast tracking women and ethnic minorities onto courses, they said that they were relying on legal advice that classed this as positive action. But a source that I've spoken to who was involved in the recruitment force at that time said to me that multiple people on multiple occasions were raising with the leadership, so with Air Vice Marshal Byford and with people under her, including the then head of recruitment, who's called Group Captain William Dole, that this was wrong, this felt wrong. They were really worried about the legality of what they were doing. And, and this source says to me that they, their concerns just weren't addressed because they just kept on relying on this legal advice. And at one point, they even apparently issued a kind of newsletter that set out, this is what positive action is, and this is what we're doing, and this is what positive discrimination is. And this source said to me that people just looked at that and they were like, yeah, but it still doesn't feel right. And so there almost seemed to be a willful lack of curiosity to respond to these concerns, given the huge pressure that they were all working under from the top because of Air Chief Marshal Wigston's policy about improving diversity, which obviously, as I've said, was well-intentioned, but was translating into these really difficult conditions. It feels like they've tied themselves in knots here. And, and perhaps they did have good intentions, but there's too many knots. And how do they unpick that? Well, exactly. And it's funny because it, it really has triggered a huge outpouring because inside defence, people want increased diversity. 
they want an equal playing field. They don't want special favours. Mm. And so it undermines that. But then also that lack of accountability has has really um, struck a, a chord amongst people. And a source flagged up to me um, this discrepancy between how the REF has dealt with breaking equality legislation, mm. which is what's happened, and how the army deals with naughty soldiers. So we have a battle group of troops based in Estonia as part of this NATO mission to deter Russian aggression. And you know, it's a really important job, but they're there for long periods of time and they do have time off. And there are strict rules for drinking alcohol. And they're only allowed to apparently to drink two pints. Very it. specific. Very specific. It used to be like that in Iraq. So it was, it was a two-can rule. <laughs> um, uh, but apparently some of them have been breaking that rule and getting into trouble drinking too much. And over uh, so far this year, they've they, they've clocked up a total of nearly £10,000 worth of fines for alcohol-related misdemeanours. Uh, I can give you a couple exa oh, of examples. Like one soldier was fined £635.56 pence for urinating in public while under the influence. Another was charged, it's quite a big fine, mm. like an even bigger fine, £1,117.92 pence for, again, breaching that two-pint rule. Oh, and wow, staying that's out, an expensive night out, isn't expensive it? Expensive <laughs> night out, staying out after curfew. Uh, and so they sort of look at that, mm. and, and obviously it's very different. This is, that's, that's sort of a discipline rule, and, and this is all about sort of a, a, a legal thing. So it's, it's very different. But it's more the principle of the RAF breaking equality legislation and no one being held to account, despite mm. the Armed Forces Minister, James Heapy, when I interviewed him last August, saying... If there is evidence of positive discrimination, the people responsible for that will be held vigorously to account. So where are we, Deborah? Bring us up to speed. Those key players in this discrimination? Are they still in the job? Are they still being paid? What's happening? Yeah, so the Armed Forces Minister did say to us that if there was any finding of positive discrimination, those responsible would be held vigorously to account. If you look at the actual chain of command at that time, uh, at the top you had Air Chief Marshal Sir Mike Wigston, who was the Chief of the Air Staff, and uh, he retired at the end of his tenure, which uh, he's retired in June, he had a, a Red Arrows fly past to oh, sort of wow. celebrate his service. Under him, you had um, Air Vice Marshal Maria Byford, who I've mentioned, who um, her job was as um, Chief of Staff Personnel, so the top personnel officer in the REF. And again, it's 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 Im Im really important to see the, the promotion of more women, more ethnic minorities going into these sort of senior roles as exactly part of what this push is. So she was a senior female officer in this role. And this announcement was made a few days ago about senior appointments. And it, it said that a new person is coming into her post and she is retiring. But the Air Force hasn't said exactly when she's retiring. And the thing is, under the terms and conditions of senior ranks, they are paid up until their actual retirement date. How much are they paid? For someone of her rank, so she's a two-star officer, uh, would be paid anything up to... You know, more than £145,000. But actually her trade, she's got a specialist trade. She joined the Air Force as a dental officer and actually spent quite a lot of her time as a dentist before she sort of went into these more general roles. And dental officers at that rank are paid much more, over £160,000. I don't know how much she's on, but you know, decent salary, which she will be paid and she has is entitled to receive until her retirement date. And then underneath her, there's uh, a, a lady called um, Air Commodore Joe Lincoln, who was also a senior personnel officer all during this time. She's moving to another job uh, with the same rank. And then Group Captain William Dole, who was the then head of recruitment, he's actually being promoted. So the only person who's actually lost their career over this is Group Captain Lizzie Nicholl, who was the subsequent head of recruitment who resigned and blew the whistle on unlawful discrimination. And how do you think, if we tie it all back now to those men who feel like I was discriminated against, I didn't get that position, and it might not have been because I wasn't good enough for it, but it was because of the colour of my skin. What's your sense about how they feel, about how it's been handled? Well, they feel the whole thing's been handled 
like horrendously. And, and I, I also spoke to the mother of a third pilot and all three of them had the same kind of stories. Oh my God, it just makes my toes curl when you say it. Um, somebody needs to be sacked. And I know we don't walk up, want our sons to be rejected, and, but you know, they do get rejected sometimes and you just take it on the chin, but this felt wrong from the get-go. I, I do think the, the, the issue there, for example, for the, those people that wanted to become pilots, it is such an elite section that you know, they, the, uh, the RAF is adamant that the way that they deal with that is only merit-based. And I've actually got a statement from a spokesperson who said that the RAF officer and air crew recruitment process is not the same as the enlisted aviator other ranks recruiting system, which is the one where this discrimination has been identified. Um, and it, they continued, any offer of employment is based solely on merit. Candidates are assessed across a number of areas by different specialists with significantly more pilot applicants than there are training places available, selection is extremely competitive, which unfortunately means some very capable candidates will not be successful. The RAF has accepted the recommendations in full and these are being implemented. So that's that whole sort of lesson learned piece. Uh, the RAF has rigorously scrutinised its recruiting practices and will continue to monitor these processes to ensure there is no repeat of the mistakes that were made in the past, which is all well and good. But I just think without that accountability piece, then these questions are going to be lingering if, as if you know, our lessons really being learned. And the other side of it, and it'd be good to get your thoughts on this, are those people who were fast-tracked effectively, those women and those ethnic minorities that are in the job or training in the job, how they must be feeling. Yeah, I mean, it's hard enough because the, you know, the, the Air Force is predominantly white male. It's just a fact. So if you're a woman, like I've been, you know, I'm, I'm not in the military, but I'm a woman who's covered defence yeah. for a long time. And, and you do, you can encounter um, you know, unfavourable comments based on being female, for example. And so you do constantly, you feel like you have to work like 10 times harder sometimes to be taken seriously. And I definitely did feel like that early on in my career. Um, now I'm kind of old and, you know, and wrinkled. So not so much, but, <laughs> it's, but it's more that, you know, like the, the people, people want to be taken seriously. They want to be respected. And any sense that there's been sort of favouritism and preferential treatment is hugely undermining mm. for people that have got their own merit. Obviously, there's a lawful way of helping to improve diversity. Um, but it's when you've got this preferential treatment that's unlawful. It obviously, it, it means you've got white men who've been discriminated against who are rightly outraged uh, and you have women and ethnic minorities who have been advantaged but then fundamentally disadvantaged because then they're just undermined by the resentment that people then feel which is awful. Last one for me Deborah can the RAF move on from this can they recover? I think they can um, and I'm sure they will it's the RAF is you know it's a it's a a, a vital institution. It's a vital organisation. It provides a fundamental pillar of British security. And I think with the new head of the Air Force now, uh, there's a real desire to, to move on, to move forward. I mean, he was very quick. It was his first engagement with journalists was to publish this inquiry and to apologise. You know, there is that uncomfortable question about where is the accountability? So we'll see where we go with that and if that does change. However, yes, they really do want to draw a line under this and to be sure to focus on the job of being the best, recruiting the best and protecting the UK. Deborah, thank you so much for dropping in on the Sky News Daily podcast, bringing us exclusives day in and day out. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, that's all from me on the Sky News Daily podcast. We'll see you again tomorrow. <laughs>